first of all, it's my great pleasure to have a chance to visit here, KAIST. Uh, yes, um, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Professor Shin, for giving, giving um, the, to come here. Today, the title of my talk is Cohomology of the Modular Space of Graphs and Groups of Homology Cobordisms of Surfaces. It's a little bit long, but, but basically the, my talk is, um, the purpose of my talk is to explain uh, construction of some invariants of three manuals by using cohomology graphs. Okay, let me start. Okay, the contents of this talk are based on joint works with Gwena El Mashiro in Strasbourg University and with Shigeyuki Morita and Masaki Suzuki. I, I will first talk about the brief history of the cohomology of modular spaces of graphs. And then I, I will change the topic. Yes. And I will talk about the cohomology, uh, some, some groups uh, made from homology co co homology cobordism of surfaces, which turns out to be the extension of the mapping class group of surface. And I will construct some invariants of such kinds of objects by using cohomology of modular of graphs. Okay. Okay. Let me begin by uh, reviewing some history of cohomology of modular spaces of graphs in somewhat a biased version. And let Fn denote a free group of rank n here. N is assumed to be uh, greater than or equal to 2. And let out Fn denotes the outer automorphism group of, F, of the free group, as I mentioned in the uh, morning talks. And let GN denote the quotient of space of the outer, outer space of rank N, which was defined by Kara and Bottoman modulo out N FN action. It is known that it is a modular space of metric graphs of rank N. And this space, GN, is a graph theoretically analog of the modular space of Riemann surfaces defined as the quotient of time human space, uh, quotiented by the action of mapping class group. But since the action of the outer, F, outer Fn on the, on the outer space is properly discontinuous, then we can easily see that the rational cohomology of the metric uh, modular space of graphs is isomorphic to the group, cohomology, group rational cohomology of outer Fn. It is a well-known fact. And the biggest, the biggest and most important goal for us is to determine and to understand the structure of this cohomology ring. Okay. okay. Here I would like to talk about some, re some known results on the cohom rational cohomology of the modular space. The first one is the, of course, the, I should say, talk about the result by Kara and Botman. The space, modular space, is homotopy equivalent to a 2D, 2n minus 3 dimensional finite cell complex. In particular, if the cohomological degree is greater than 2n minus 3, then of course the cohomology vanishes. This is, this is true. And in fact, Kara and Botman showed that the virtual cohomological dimension of outer Fn is just equal to 2n minus 3. And after the result by Hatcher and Bottman and also Natalie Ball on the existence of the stability of the rational cohomology, it, one breakthrough was brought by Galatius. He showed that it, relative, uh, no, it, uh, stable rational cohom stable rational cohomology vanishes, except the H0, the trivial part. So, stably, stably, no, no non-trivial rational cohomology. Ah, it's, a, it's a reduced cohomology, just, just cutting the H0. In the, so, stable, as for the stable part, we, we could determine. How about the unstable part? This is highly non-trivial. In the stable range, but not so many classes are known. This is a result by Hatch and Botman in 1998, and also Gerritz and Ohashi. As for the rank n up to 6, the rational cohomology was, com was completely computed. And 
Almost all the cohomology class vanishes except the trivial one, H0. This is also, this is of course in the implication of the connectedness. And the first non-trivial unstable class was found by Hatch and Bottman in H4 of G4. Next one come is, appears in the H8 of G6. This, is, this computation was done by Ohashi. Here, here generator mu k is the dual of the case Morita class. Here I, st um, I skip the precise definition of Morita class, but I will later mention about the related topics. So after that, in 2011, Gray, in his uh, doctoral thesis, showed that uh, mu3, the, the dual of the third Morita class in H12 of G8, it's non-trivial. So far, it is not known whether mu k, it is defined in H4k of G2k plus 2, is non-trivial or not. It is not known about the mu4, mu5, mu6, da da da. Please note that yeah, it is, it is expected that they are all non-trivial, but as for computation for, these, for the determination of these spaces were completely done by computers. It's very big calculations. This is a, yes. In, in 2015, in a joint work with Shigeyuki Morita and Masaki Suzuki, we computed the integral Euler characteristics. This is, this is not the same as the usual Euler characteristic of groups. It's just the it, alternating sum of the Betty numbers. It, of Euler integral characteristic of Gn up to n is at most 11. Yeah. It, this computation also was done by using computers. In fact, to, for the computation of rank 11, we used a supercomputer in at Tokyo Tech about uh, three or four weeks. <laughs> It's a very big combinatorial calculation, and we show that the integral Euler characteristics. In some sense, Euler characteristics is the easiest invariant in topology, but the space itself is very huge. So Euler characteristics, even the Euler characteristics, has a, has much information. Okay, Euler characteristics is one one two one two one one minus twenty one minus one hundred twenty four and minus over ten over thousand. What does, does this mean? You know that our computation shows the existence of many non-trivial auto-dimensional classes, of course, because it contribu contributed to minus. Yeah. Before that, it is not even, it, it, is, it is not known, it was, it was not known whether such kinds of classes exist. So, <laughs> the, and the, by the result of, okay, of course, this one, this one means uh, the connectedness of moduli space. And this two corresponding to the first Morita class and the second Morita class. And here, they should the third Morita class. But our computation says that the Euler characteristic is one, which means that there exists at least, at, at least one non-trivial autodimensional class in out of F8. And many more classes will appear in at rank 9, 10, and 11. But at, but at present, we have no explicit constructions about the classes. Yes. The, after this result, in to the, at the end of 2015, Bass already computed the case of n is equal to 7. This is important in this talk. He com his computation result say says that there exist non-trivial classes in degree 8 and also degree 11. This, this computation was also done by computer. Very, very huge computation. And, it was, uh, yeah, the, and this result was very surprising one for us. The reason was two. This is surprising because, ah, of course, it's okay. This result, of course, it, uh, is consistent with our Euler characteristics of our computation of Euler characteristic, because 8 is even and 11 is odd. 
Yeah. To see the, uh, honestly speaking, we, we, did, we did not expect such kinds of classes exist in, out of F7, G7. So it was a surprising one. And more surprising is that it gives the first non-trivial explicit auto rational class, and also it is a virtually top cohomology. Two times, two times seven minus three is equal to 11. Note that as for the uh, modular space of Riemann surfaces, the virtual top, virtually top cohomology vanishes. So, yeah, we did not expect such, such kinds of phenomena. It was, it was very surprising. Yeah, yet, honestly speaking, when I saw his paper first, I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe his result. So, what, uh, what we did is to give another proof, or to check his computation. So, the result, the first result I would like to talk about in this talk is we gave, we gave another proof of a part, half of his result, using, by completely different method. Okay, one up. Yes, okay. Later I will use this result. Only this result, later. And here I would like to um, completely change the topic. It's a, it's a second topic. Homology cobordism group of surfaces. Okay, let, now we start the topology. Let sigma G1 denotes uh, uh, the compact connected to surface of genus G with one boundary component. And pi 1 sigma G1, uh, the fundamental group of surface is, you know, that it's a free group of rank 2G. And of, of course, the homology group of sigma G1 is of course known and it is given by this formula. And this is a definition of homology cobordism. Over, surf over surface, it's a little bit long, but basically it's a, it's a cobordism with some homology cobordism condition. Homology cobordism over sigma G1 consists of a data of a compact three manifold with two boundary, uh, two boundaries, yeah, by technical reason, two boundaries are connected, uh, glued along their boundaries, but basically it's a, it's a cobordism from surface to surface. Yeah, these conditions are about uh, markings. It's not so important in this talk. Important property is that we have a, sorry. We have a cobordism from surface to surface with boundary, boundaries are technically, by a technical reason, boundaries are connected. From sigma G1 to sigma G1, we have an identification of the surface, sigma G1 pro, from identification of sigma G1 with a positive, uh, positive part of the boundary and the uh, upper part and the lower part. Sorry. With a homology cobordism condition, this one. So the three manifold M has the same homology as the surface, sigma G1. Yes, pictorically, homology cobordism is depicted as in, like this. And we define, we now define the set of, uh, no, set of isomorphism class, um, Martin compatible diffeomorphism classes of homology cobordism. It's a natural uh, equivalence relation just by using the diffeom orientation preserving diffeomorphism, respecting the boundary boundary marking. Note that the set CG1 has a natural stacking operation. Yeah. It, may be, uh, yeah. it may be said that this, the set CG1 is a kind of topological uh, TQFT. It's a very special kind of TQFT. And so the set CG1 has a product operation. Just if you have a two homology coverings, then you can identify the middle part by using the identification of the surface. Then we can easily see that old CG1 becomes a monoid with a unit given by the usual product, product three manifold with a trivial marking. 
one of the interesting point is that we can embed the mapping class group of surface into this CG1 by using by other sorry as a marking change to the trivial one. Here, if you are given a mapping class, then take a representative phi as a diffeomorphism relative to the boundary, then we can construct a homology cobordism. Underlying three manifold is the same as the trivial one. And the one marking is that of course that is also the trivial one, but we we twist the lower marking by using the mapping class. Then we can easily check that the mapping class group is a unit subgroup, just a unit subgroup of CG1. So it's a kind of extension of the mapping class group. Okay. Yeah, this is a monoid, but not, it, it's not the group. To construct a group from the set, from the monoid CG1, we need the, we endow with a equivalence relation called the smooth homology cobordism. Please note that we are now considering the homology cobordism of homology cobordism. So our, so our theory relates to the two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional manifolds. Okay. It's, uh, okay. This equivalence relation is the same as the usual definition of the homology cobordism of surface with boundary. If you are given a two homology cobordism, they are homology cobordant if they exist a four-dimensional uh, smooth manifold uh, bounding homologically. Then we can easily, ch we can check that uh, the group HG1 quotient of the CG1 by this equivalence relation is a group with the inverse element is just given by the orientation reversed manifold with it opposite with swapping the it, marking and by using um, by using some algebraic action we can check that mg1 is still embedded in hg1 okay Starting with the mapping class group, we first embed the group in, into the monoid of homology cobordism, and then, then taking the homology cobordism relation, we you have a group. This is monoid, and this is group. And we can check that this composition is also uh, injective. So mapping class group is en embedded, is enlarged to some group denoted by HG1. It's a homology cobordism group of surfaces, as in the title. And this group HG1 has shares many, many tools to study with the mapping class group MG1. For example, you know that the fundamental exact sequence of the mapping class group is obtained by using the homology action on the surface. And this gives a homomorphism from the mapping class group to the simple, integral symplectic group. And by using the mono, um, by, use, by considering the difference of the induced map of homology by I plus and I minus, we can still get a similar homomorphism from HG1 to symplectic group of H. And, and the kernel denoted by IHG1 is the analog of the Torelli subgroup of HG1. Okay. Okay. As in the case of the mapping class group surface with boundary, we have our natural extension sequence H01, H01, H2, and da da And we can, uh, from, by definition, we can check the H01 genus 0 case. The basic case is the most difficult group. It's a group, homology cobordism group of homology three spheres. It's very important. And we can also check that HG1 general includes the framed G-string link concordance group. It's a generalization, it's a kind of generalization of braid group. In particular, in the case of H11, genus 1 case, it includes the not concordance group. So that the, the group HG1 contains many interesting groups related to the three-dimensional topology. Mapping class group, braid group and its generalization, in particular the not concordance group, and in the basic case, the homology cobordism group of homology three spheres. So I would like to understand the structure of this group. 
to construct the invariants of three manifolds. The first question is, what's the abelianization? In particular, what's the rational abelianization of this group? H1, HG1 with Q coefficients. The question is, is it not trivial? Please keep in mind that in the case of mapping class group, genus 1 case is a little bit exceptional, it's one-dimensional, but in general, MG1, rational homology, rational abelianization of HG1, in fact, it is known that MG1 is Exact. So, on the, as for the integral homology, uh, in 2011, Schaffried and Kip, Jetchun Cha, and also Tehim, and also Stefan Friedel showed that this group, abelianization of this HG1, includes the infinitely many copies of Z over 2Z as a direct sum for any G is at least 1. And their construction comes from the, uh, comes from the not concordance group theory. So, so the abelianization has very big torsion elements. But as for the rational homology, it was not known. No information was obtained. Now I would like to talk about my joint work with Gwenael Mashio. In his joint work, we construct some invariants of HG1 by using the theory of Johnson homomorphisms. For that, I would like to recall the, uh, some, some stuff from the Johnson homomorphism theory. It's a little bit technical. Okay. Let pi, de oh, oh. Let pi denote the fundamental, uh, the fundamental group of the surface, and as in the usual situation, that in the Johnson homomorphism, we consider the lower central series of pi defined inductively by the first filter is pi itself and gamma, gamma i plus one pi is the commutator subgroup with pi and gamma y pi, and inductively defined. Let hg denote the first integral homology of the surface, and this, this module has a natural intersection form coming from the Poincare duality of surface. Yeah, from here it's a little bit technical. And let's consider the LZ, it's a freely algebra generated by HZ. It's a natural, it has a natural gradient, and it's a graded real algebra over Z. And we have a, nat by a classical result from the combinatorial group theory, the successive quotient of the lower central series of pi, in other words, the lower central series of a free group, the, the i successive quotient is naturally isomorphic to the degree i part of the free d algebra. Now I would like to, yeah, I, I would like to construct some invariants of HG1 by using its action on the find, on the nilpotent quotient of, nilpotent quotient pi over gamma i pi to construct, to construct the action we need the storing classical theorem. But in, uh, I would like to speak, skip the details, but uh, yeah, what I can say is that there exists an action of, uh, there exists a natural action of HG1 to the uh, to higher nilpotent quotient of pi. And we define the Johnson filtration, HG1, or HG1, starting from HG10 is equal to HG1 itself, and HG1 case, case filter is defined as a kernel of the action on the case nilpotent quotients. If you know the mapping, uh, if you know the Johnson homomorphism theory for mapping class groups, th this is a completely the analogous situation. And the gap between the case filter and the K plus first filter is measured by so-called case Johnson homomorphism. In fact, yeah, I completely skipped, I'm a little sloppy about the definition of the Johnson homomorphism, but we have some, uh, yes, this tau K is a Johnson homomorphism from the case filter to some Abelian group. And the kernel is given by the next filter. Yeah, and there's, 
on the first Johnson homomorphism from the Torelli part to some abelian group, the kernel is known as a uh, second filter. And we now consider, okay. we now, yeah, it was a um, zero, how to say? It was shown by Garfaldis Levin and also Nathan Habegger in 2000. They determined the image of the Johnson homomorphism for homology homomorphism surface completely. And the image is given by this formula. In other words, HZ is a degree one part of the free real algebra, and this is a degree k plus one part, the k plus first part of free real algebra, and we, we have a natural uh, bracket map in the real algebra, and take the kernel. This is the image of the case Johnson homomorphism. So they characterize the image of Johnson homomorphism. Mm, it's a little bit <laughs> complicated, but now we gather all the information of Johnson homomorphism with respect to K. This is a successive quotient of the filtration of the homology coverage group, and this is the uh, uh, direct sum of all images of Johnson homomorphism. By this severance, we can see, you can easily see that these sets are isomorphism as a graded real algebra. So the situation becomes a little bit complicated, but now I'm I'm only doing uh, I'm only doing the construction of the real algebra of the group H G one. Roughly speaking, we now constructed the real algebra. You know, I think you know the correspondence between a uh, uh, very important correspondence between Lie group and real algebra. We are now doing the similar things for groups and some real algebra, and we have constructed the real algebra for the H G one. Group. Okay. The target group of target real algebra can be regarded as a real algebra associated with a group. Precisely speaking, the trolley part. Hereafter, I would like to consider for, um, for simplicity the rational version. Now we consider everything with tensoring with Q. Then it is well known that, that this target real algebra is isomorphic to the real algebra of positive symplectic derivations. It comes from the, um, for example, in the theory of deformation quantization or something like that. And this real algebra has a many, has many roles in topology and also geometry. For example, as, as we saw that it works as a target space of Johnson homomorphisms and as a target space of finite type invariants of three manifolds. And also later I will use by a conservative theorem, it relates to the moduli space of graphs. So, but the structure of this real algebra is not, not, well, not so well known. For example, even the abelianization of this real algebra, this uh, abelianization is an analog of the group. Uh, group case, it is defined as a quotient, quotient vector space by the uh, to, commutators of HG1. And since the, this real algebra is graded, the abelianization has, has a natural direct sum decomposition with respect to the weights, where degree, uh, weight W part is given by this formula. So, so since the this great since this is a graded algebra, its homology group, its real algebra homology group has a double degrees. It's by graded. And weight one part is by definition coincided with the by, uh, the degree one part of this real algebra. And the monitor shows that in the uh, in the odd degree odd weight part, abelianization is stable and trivial. It has a quotient, it has a map, uh, subjective map from this part to the symmetric 2k plus first symmetric power of H. H is a rational homology group of surface. By using so called his Moritz trace map. This means that the, uh, the abelianization is stably increasing this big space.
And once uh, after yeah, after getting his result, Morita conjectures abelianization. This this space might coincide with this part, but his construction was completely uh, rejected by Conan, Kasabov, and Botman. They show that there exists much more many much more stable summons in the abelianization of this real algebra. In fact, they stratified the they stratified this space into one loop part, two loop part, three part, loop part, da da da. Then Morita, what Morita find is only the first first part, one loop part. And Conan Katsabov and Botman show that two loop part is also non-trivial. In fact, it it relates to the uh, to cusp form and modular forms of SL two Z. And uh, to Jim Conan also shows that the three three loops part is also non-trivial. It's highly non-trivial. It relates to the homology of GL and GL three Z. Okay. Now we have uh, two problems. First one is uh, what's the rational abelianization of the groups of homology cohomology? And the second one is uh, what's the abelianization? Uh, yeah, since it is a rational vector space, it's, uh, it's almost the same as uh, what's the rational abelianization of this real algebra. Okay, and uh, this real algebra comes from the, this group. It's a, something, it's a Li algebra homology, and this is a kind of Li group homology. And I would like to relate these groups now. For that, Morita constructed first group version of his trace map, and constructed, constructed the homomorphism from the group HG1 to this somewhat complicated group, essentially given by the first degree part and also his trace map component, twisted by symplectic group. Which we call the Morita Torres homomorphism. Yeah, it looks very complicated, but, but by the theorem of Garfaldi's Levin and also Habega, we can easily see that the image of this homomorphism is the risky dense. It's almost, um, rationally, it's almost uh, subjective if you cut the higher degree part for, for each finite truncation with respect to the degree. Please note that this part, this part is a, this part is a just a vector space. But by, we have now twisted by simplistic group, the target space it's, is itself is a, not a commutative group. In fact, if you consider, if you take the simplistic invariant part of this, this vector space, then it is easy to see that it's zero. So, now I would like to understand the uh, rational abelianization, but this homomorphism does not have any information about the abelianization. Because target, if you, because if you abelianize this target group, then it becomes zero. Okay. But after that, in the joint work with Gwenael Mashur and Mashur in 2011, we construct a small generalization of Morita's trace map. In fact, we construct a homomorphism from the group HG1 to the uh, crossed product of uh, some uh, complete completion of the uh, abelianization of real algebra twisted by SPH, simplistic group. What's this? It, Okay, this is a very, this is a small technical list for the completion. But what we, what we constructed, the homo, uh, homomorphism having the properties that the first one, the restriction to the Torelli part is equivalent, and second one is images, also the risky dense for each finite truncation of this part. So, in the previous case, we couldn't, we couldn't get any abelianized information, but in this case, there might be a chance to get some information. 
if we could show that the rational abelianized, symplectic invariant part of rational abelianization of real algebra is, if non-trivial, then this map is, this homomorphism is essentially subjective. Then we can, we can see that rational abelianization of the group is non-trivial. Okay, basically, the, yeah, the, this, this is a group, this is a real algebra, so the direction is basically looks uh, to strange. In fact, op opposite direction, from D group to D algebra. So, to define this homomorphism, we, co we need to construct the logarithm construction. You know that from the D group to, the, from the D algebra to D group, you can get, you can use the exponential map. But we are now trying to construct a group to the D algebra, so we need, the, we need the, some construction of D algebra, uh, logarithm construction, logarithm. It's a little bit technical part, but by taking these types of modification, we can get logarithm map. Now, by using this criterion, if, re, if real algebra homology, simplistic invariant part of real algebra homology is non-trivial, then we can see the group, rational abelianization is non-trivial. Homology covalent group is non-trivial in some sense. In the genus one case, it's, it's a little bit sim, uh, easier. In the case, simple, uh, in the case of genus is equal to one, then the simplistic group is equal to the special linear group, you know. And by a general theory of representation, irreducible polynomial representation of SL2Z are occupied by symmetric group ten symmetric tensors. And this is a Young diagram notation. This, this K means a case symmetric tensor power. And it is well known also the formula about the tensor product of symmetric power. If you have the tensor, if you take the sim, uh, the tensor product of the case simple, symmetric power and L simple, symmetric tensor power, then it, it has a irreducible decomposition given by this formula. From this part, from this formula, we can see that the, we can see that SL or SP invariant part of this, uh, <coughs> this tensor product is given by this formula. If Namely, if k is equal to L, then there exists a non-trivial invariant part. Now, I, this is a part about the source space, the target space. And this is a table of irreducible decomposition of the target space up to degree 18. Yes. In, yeah. Degree 1, uh, genus 1 case is a little bit uh, special. And there, there are no no non-trivial elements in degree 1 or degree 3, and we have some invariant components in degree 2, 6, 10, 14, 16, 18. And this no these numbers are the multiplicity of the representations. From, from this table, we can see the following. Okay. Uh, but before that, the this table was obtained in joint work with Shigeuki, Morita, and Masaki Suzuki by using uh, some mathematical computation. And we use the yeah, character, character formula. And using the usual irreducible decomposition procedure. Then from this table, you know that 57. Now I would like to know that abelianization is non-trivial. Uh, uh, this, uh, I would like to show that it, uh, last, uh, in, Invariant part of the abelianization is non-trivial. So, for example, this 57 is a very big number. But I would like to, um, I would like, we, for, the, for the computation of the abelianization, we need to take the brackets of lower degree terms. And the tensor product, for example, to get, a, to get an element in the degree 18, we, for example, we need to, uh, to we need to take a bracket with degree 2 and degree 16. And the tensor product formula is known. Non-trivial part appears when the representations are same. And we can easily check that this 57 is very big, so that we cannot kill all the components from the lower degree components. 
This is an easy observation that invariant part, the source space of the invariant part, invariant space of the source space is non trivial when degree weight is 2, 6, 10, 14, 18. It's an easy computation. So, in the case of genus 1, our homomorphism is, target space of our homomorphism is non trivial. And our homomorphism is basically surjective. The image is the riskiness. Then we can conclude that in the case of genus 1, uh, rational abelianization is non trivial. It's completely a uh, representation theoretic considerations. In the degree 2, in the degree 2 case, there are no components coming from the lower degree. What's the topological meaning? It's easy to see that this, the lowest degree part is, is restricted to the uh, well-known isomorphism of the rational abelianization of the mapping class group of genus 1. This is isomorphic to rank 1 vector space. Now, the main theorem of this talk is that uh, this is joint work in general material. For any G is equal to G is at least 2, the rational abelianization is not trivial. For the proof, yeah, we have two proofs for that. One is a, it's a little bit easier one. It, it says only, the, only the, in the stable range. We can use the following theorem by Konsevich. Yeah. He, yes, he found a very interesting formula about the, some di infinite dimensional simplectically algebra with a cohomology of moduli spaces by using graph homology theory. The left hand part is a little bit, looks very difficult. First, we take the stabilization of the real algebra and considering the homology, and we take the, some printing part with respect to natural Hopper algebra structure, and then taking the simplistic invariant part is a little bit long process. But, but this kind of very mysterious group is isomorphic to the cohomology of moduli space, of graphs. Homology of outer FN, in other words. Now let's substitute k, uh, substitute 1 into k and 6 into, into n. Then what happens? In the case of uh, n is e k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 12, then the right hand side becomes 8, 11, and g7. This is what Bartholdi computed in his. Uh, to big calculation. This is rank one. So, by our, by our construct by construction of our homomorphism, rational abelianization is non trivial for sufficiently large G. Yeah, honestly speaking, uh, our homomorphism was obtained in 2011. And we, we see, we understand that the homomorphism is non trivial. But after the, yeah, after the construction, we did not know what the target, whether the target space is non trivial or not. But last, uh, to, to, at the end of 2015, Bass already computed that it is non trivial. So we could, we could post a um, paper on the archive last year. So it's a six years project. Ah, okay, but, but this proof only says for the, in the stable range. But our statement is that it holds for any G is at least, G is at least two. For that, we need to compute the abelianization of this part explicitly. And this was a, and this is a second theorem by, uh, in a, obtained in the joint work with Morita Suzuki in uh, last year and we, by using the computer by by using the computer and with a big calculation we constructed the explicit isomorphism in this degree in this range in fact there exists uh, some non trivial simplistic invariant homomorphisms that 
induce the isomorphism on the rational abelianization. Uh, this, is a, uh, yeah, this is a recipe for the computation of this real algebra homology. The computation is basically very straightforward. Just considering, just compute all the image of the black uh, boundary map. First, we con okay. First, we con we find we we seek a co coordinate system of this space in, in the space of cycles. This is isomorphic to the six hundred and fifty dimensional space. Uh, and to construct a coordinate system, we consider we first embed this space into more bigger space, which is isomorphic to um, this dimensional vector space. And by exp by exp computation. We determine the coordinate system. Then we compute the image of the bracket map. This is a boundary map. Then first, yeah. Okay. First, we we started the computation. We did not we we did not believe the Bartholdi's computation. So, but the result says this actually there exists one dimensional co kernel of the bracket map. It's a straightforward computation. And the final result is that we obtained the co-cycle C as a linear combination of 647 multiple constructions. It's a very big linear combination of homomorphisms. And in, the, in a paper in, uh, published, in the, published from the experimental mathematics, uh, we wrote the formula very long, <laughs> very long. It takes two or three pages. <laughs> it's a very stupid formula. Well, yeah, we try to understand the meaning of this cycle C, but at, at present we have no idea. Yeah, we have a we have a program to compute this cycle C. At first, it takes twenty minutes, even for computing, computing one vector. Okay, this is the final seat. Okay, the conclusion. Note that we showed that. This is the main theorem. The rational abelianization of HG1, this is non trivial. What, this, what does, does it mean? First, in the case of genus 1, we, have, we found, we showed that the abelian, rational abelianization is very big. Note that. Whoa. In the case of genus 1, we have a Uh, some big numbers, and it's we have some surjective homomorphism in the case of genus one. We can call, we can regard this homomorphism as an invariant of homology cobordisms of genus one. And which is additive with respect to the with respect to the stacking. If you consider this homorism as an invariant of homology cobordism, then the invariant the value of the invariant of the product of M and N it, it satisfies additivity condition. And okay. And M and M are uh, the homology cobordism over surfaces. And this homomorphism is also by definition the homology cobordism invariant with respect to four dimensional homology cobordism relation. So we have a additive homology cobordism invariant of homology cobordism over surfaces. And more interestingly, for any G is at least two the twelfth Johnson homomorphism gives an additive invariant of homology cobordism. Homolo uh, homology cobordism, which is invariant under four dimensional homology cobordism. So this is additive homology cobordism invariant. Obtained by using the cohomology uh, non trivial cohomology class in the moduli space of graphs. And since the abelianization of the mapping class group is Non trivial, uh, trivial. The value, uh, if you 
when taking the stacking, then the, the value is invariant if you change the, the gluing, gluing method. The value of these invariants do not depend on the way of gluing of homomorphism. So, so this, our homomorphism is, uh, gives an invariant of other suitable manifolds. Homology cobordism invariant. And from the construction by using the Johnson homomorphism, this is also the finite type invariant. So we get the finite type homology cobordism additive invariants of homology cobordism surfaces. So it's a result of our joint works. But, uh, so, and this is a story for G is at least one. But at, from this, from our construction, we can say any we can say nothing about the genus zero case. This is a homology cobordism group of homology three spheres. You know that this is an infinitely generated abelian group, for example, by using the result of Fulta and also Fintish It's a, it's a gauge, their proof is deep gauge theory. But from our, from our method at, at present, we cannot say anything about the genus zero case. But as for the genus, is at least one, we could construct the very interesting invariant, the finite type, homology cobordisms invariant, and also additive. That's all. Thank you for, inter thank you for your attention.